Well, hello there, rock stars. It's me, Michael Stone. Yet another edition of Rock Talk. <laughs> Hey there, rock stars. Michael Stone here yet again for another episode of Rock Talk. My back isn't quite at 100% just yet, so this is going to be another at the home uh, sitting around episode. But you know, I've been having so much fun talking about crystals and uh, crystal stuff that I wanted to dive into some of the nitty gritties of crystallography in a little more detail on this episode. Namely, the seven crystal systems that I mentioned back at the, um, uh, the what is a crystal episode, if you haven't seen that, that one already. And so this kind of goes over the uh, seven general designators that uh, mineralogists, the scientists that study minerals and crystals and crystal structure, use to di differentiate these different kinds of crystal shapes. Um, so let's just go over them one at a time here. It's just going to be a lot easier if we can just kind of get a, get a look for what they look like. We can just go from there. The first one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that's not what have I done? No. Easy come, easy go, I suppose. This is a three dimensional representation out of the most up-to-date and latest technology. This is the finest that styrofoam and pipe cleaner technology could produce of the isometric crystal system, what is also known as the uh, cubic crystal system for very obvious reasons, as you might be able to tell. Because it looks like a cube. That's right. The isometric crystal system is uh, defined by um, having all of its lengths being of equal, equal size. So the height, the width, and the length are all the same. You know, see they all have the same color, they're all the same. And it's also defined by the interior, interior angle here. So you have the, this angle, I hope, I hope this comes out. You've got this angle here, and then there's this bottom angle here. And all of these angles are all equal to 90 degrees, giving you a cube. And um, so this is the actual shape of the unit cell of the crystal structure. So the actual lattice is going to be made up of tiny, tiny, tiny little ions that are all arranged in this format, in this, in this frame here. And the larger, larger crystal structure reflects the microscopic shape here. So you have crystals like halite, crystals like pyrite that form and they form t into cubes, into cubic shapes sometimes, and that's because it reflects that microscopic structure. Oh, <laughs> which is pretty neat, wow! Now, as we move on into more complicated uh, crystal systems here, it's going to alter the cubic shape just slightly, either by altering the um, lengths and the widths or by altering the angles here. And that is how you get different kinds of crystal systems, is by altering those, those properties primarily. Whoa, so this is the tetragonal crystal system. Whoa, look at that. Take a look at this 3D. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew, pew. And of course, you can of course tell by the absolute accuracy of my model here that I made by my own hands. But just, just in case, just to let you know, it's almost exactly the same thing as the cubic system, only these ends here have been lengthened relative to the rest of it. But it has the same angles, all the angles are still 90 degrees. No, no! <sighs> ruined. Everything is ruined. Ruined. All the angles, interior angles here, there we go. All these interior angles are still 90 degrees. These, this angle is still 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees, trust me. The only difference is that uh, it has been stretched lengthwise. You can see here that <laughs> you can you can see <laughs> you can see here that the tetragonal has been stretched long ways relative to cubic, or it could be stretched lengthwise. It really doesn't matter what direction it's stretched in. It just matters that um, one set of lengths has been stretched but the other set of lengths are all the same. Next is orthorhombic. Whoa. Jeez. 
Check that out. Whoa. Whoa. Same, similar to isometric and tetragonal, all of the angles for orthorhombic here are going to have the same 90 degrees. 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, but instead of the sides being similar, you can see now that there are no sides that are the same. They've been changed here. So these sides are all going to be a different length than these sides are all gonna be a different length from these sides. So it's all completely different in terms of those lengths, but all the angles are still the same. To review, the isometric is basically a cube and each of its sides is a square. That's a square, that's a square, that's a square, that's a square. They're all squares. Tetragonal is a box with two squares, that's a square, and that's a square, and the rest of the sides are rectangles. A rectangle, a rectangle, and a rectangle. Ho ho, check that out. Lastly, the orthorhombic has a bunch of rectangles. That's a rectangle, that's a rectangle, that's a rectangle, that's a rectangle, and that's a rectangle, and they're all 90 degrees to each other by definition of what a rectangle is as a shape. Now, all the next um, crystal systems after this are gonna start to get a little wonky because we're gonna start playing with those angles there. The next crystal system, I think that was one, two, three, this is crystal system number four out of seven is the rhombohedral. Whoa, ho, ho, kinda wild, kinda wild and crazy. Also known as um, trigonal, and it is very, very similar to our isometric or our cubic over here. The only difference being, you can tell, is that it, it's been tilted slightly. You, you kind of come over here and somebody went, went, and tilted it this way, and then went over here, and tilted it this way, and I think went over in one other direction, and like tilted it and, and squished it in another direction. So now, all of the shapes, all these shapes over here, shapes over here, shapes over here, have all turned into rhomboids, or um, diamonds. They're all diamond shapes. That's a diamond shape, that's a diamond shape, and that's a diamond shape right there. And there is some symmetry to the angles, if, depending on where you look at them. The acute angles here, even though my model isn't perfectly accurate, are technically all the same angle. And then all of the non-acute angles are going to be, whoops, that's kind of hard to see, all the non-acute obtuse angles. Stop being obtuse, Kevin! <laughs> Dude, I'm just a cutie. What would you say? I'm just a... I'm just a cutie. I'm just a cutie. There you go. It's just an acute. Try not to not be too obtuse. All my angles are right. Damn right. Anyway, completely forgot where I was going there. So that was one, two, three, four, five is monoclinic because it's a monocline. It's one cline, mono, singular, cline, incline. So it's a singu single incline. Totally making that up, I have, no, I have no idea. So this is monoclinic. Very similar, it's not the same, but it's very similar to our tetragonal. Whoop. Tetragonal right here, except it's been pushed over. So if you take the, the, the tetragonal and you were to push it over on one of its, its axes there, you would get monoclinic. And monoclinic, as you can see, has a couple rhomboids, rhombus here, on a rhombus here, we've got four rectangles, a rectangle here, a rectangle here, and uh, two rectangles on the sides there. So it has a couple 90 degree angles in its angles and a, a couple others that are not 90 degrees. But also very important is that none of the sides are the same. It doesn't share any, any side lengths have the same. They're all different. We have covered five, five of the crystal systems. <laughs> All right, the next one starts to get kind of weird. Um, it's going to be the least symmetrical of all the shapes so far that we've covered, and it is the triclinic. So it's one more clinic than the monoclinic, or it's actually skipped straight to two, to three, because mono 
had one cl one mono cl cl one one clinic, and then tri clinic is three. So this is full on gone all the way to three different clines, which actually makes sense to the shape. Um, I wasn't really able to capture it as well as I would have liked in 3D styrofoam and pipe cleaner technology, <laughs> but it's basically. Um, being being um, pushed over in three di three di directions, whereas Monoclinic only had one lean to it. This one technically has three three leans. Where it's leaning over here, it's leaning this way, and it's also leaning in in this direction too. But it's kind of hard to tell because I didn't really. Oh, there you go. Kind of yeah, it's kind of like leaning in that direction. Similar to Monoclinic, Triclinic has no um, similar sides. All the sides are different sizes, so you can tell here by all the different colors. And all of its sides for Triclinic are rhombuses, but none of those rhombuses, none of those rhomboids have similar angles. So all the sides and all of the angles on Triclinic are going to be different. It's just all bunch of weirdness. It's all kinds of crazy. It's super weird. And that's how you know you're looking at a Triclinic crystal. So we've covered six of the crystal systems now. The last one is... Hexagonal! Whoa! It's a hexagon! Yeah! Look at that. Hexagonal. Super easy to remember because you just got a hexagon and then you just stack it up on a bunch of rectangles. So I got two hexagons stacked up on a bunch of rectangles. Doot, 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 doot. With the internal angle here being 120 degrees and all of these angles being 90 degrees. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. It seems super simple and it makes a lot of sense because if you've ever seen a quartz tetrahedron, this is the kind of, the kind of uh, general setup. You've got the hexagon, hexagonal shape and it just goes until you get a giant, a giant quartz um, pyramid. It's not a pyramid, it's a tetragon. And that's what you're looking at there. But what's interesting is that actually the interiors of uh, this hexagonal shape can be split up. This isn't actually the unit cell of a tetragon, of a, excuse me, a hexagon. I probably got that totally mixed up. Anyway, you can see here, by, I've got kind of the different color codes on these, uh, here we go on these pipe cleaners. And if you were to have a, a, another connection here in the middle, this would form another rhomboid, another little rhombus shape that is the actual unit cell of the hexagon. And I'll put a little, little shape in there and make that a little, a little easier to see. And that's the actual unit cell that you're looking at. And so it can technically be be chopped up into smaller pieces, but I think this is just a lot easier to um, kind of see and and understand that this is basically what the ions are doing. This is what the atoms in a hexagonal crystal are doing, forming that hexagonal shape and forming that beautiful hexagonal prism that we know. Wow. I would like to end things there, rock stars. Those cover the seven crystal systems. Let me know what kind of crystal stuff you'd like to know about next time. Um, and I, I know there are a bunch of awesome recommendations already on the pipeline that I'm going to be working on. Absolutely, you, you, you betcha, once my back starts to get into more of a functional place. Um, but I'd love hearing your comments, so feel free to let me know what you thought, if this was helpful, if it was um, informative. I'd love to hear it. If you have any questions, if I missed anything, also let me know because I probably did. <laughs> That's okay. It's all a part of the process. Now, thanks so much for watching, rock stars. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, remember, smash that subscribe button. Catch you next time. Uh-oh. What do I do? Probably stuck forever now. Uh, I know. Crystal man! My lattices do not add up to 180 degrees, therefore I cannot exist.